Welcome again. Uh, we are here for the virtual recruiting panel, the job and internship search do's and don'ts. My name's Katie and I work in the Career Enrichment Network here in the College of the Liberal Arts. We're bringing you various industries and professionals within the field to help to answer in your questions and prepare you for the search, as well as for fall career days and any other networking opportunities that might um, be coming your way. Um, so please feel free to answer or ask any questions you have. With that said, I'm going to introduce everyone. We have Greg from Target. He's the lead campus recruiter for Target Stores. Greg joined Target back in January of 1999 when Target was going to open the New England market. He started out as an executive team leader in guest services and opened up one of the first six stores in New England. In November 2001, Greg was assigned the executive team leader HR role to open a brand new store in Smithfield, Rhode Island. He stayed in the HR role, opening up two more stores until June of 2006, when he was promoted to group training leader and ran the leadership training program for New England and upstate New York. In November 2013, he was moved over to campus recruiting position where he's been for the last eight years. Haley uh, is here uh, from ALQ. She's a college relationship specialist on the talent acquisition team. She graduated from Keene State College in 2018 after a year of working abroad in Italy. She started with ALQ in July of 2020. As a college relationship specialist, Haley is responsible for planning, executing, and attending events both virtually and on campus with students or student organizations, academic programs, and faculty to find the next best candidates to join the OWL crew. <clears throat> you can find Haley at career fairs, mock interviews, resume reviews, info sessions, uh, sales competitions, and more. Her favorite thing about OWL is the have fun, working hard culture, which she exemplifies every day. Brenda is joining us from Coles. She is the store manager right here in State College at our Coles. She began her career in 2001 in South Carolina as an assistant store manager in apparel and accessories. In 2005, she transferred to Buffalo, New York market when Coles opened four locations. While in Buffalo, she was the HR operation assistant store manager. Brenda entered the high potential program where there and while there and was offered the new store in State College in 2008. She enjoys running the store and being a partner with Penn State University. Brenda is a graduate of Mercyhurst University with a degree in fashion merchandising and a minor in marketing. Megan is joining us from Geico. Uh, she is a regional college recruiter. She graduated with her degree in psychology and criminal justice from Ferrum College. Megan has been with Geico for eight years and has helped mul held multiple positions within the company, starting in sales and making her way to, a, to human resources. Megan has a passion for helping liberal arts students find different job opportunities. Liz is joining us from Ferguson. Uh, she currently works as the lead early career recruiting specialist for Ferguson Enterprises. After graduating from South Dakota State University with a degree in economics, Liz started her career with Ferguson over eight years ago. Following two years in the nonprofit sector in her, in her following two years in new nonprofit sector. In her current role, Liz has found a way to combine and use her opposite interests and overwhelming love of PowerPoints, a peculiar operational mindset, and a passion for making student engagement fun on campus. Today, she works in partnership with area leadership and supporting HR personnel across the U.S. to ensure growth and success specific to Ferguson's training and internship program. So thank you all, and thank you for joining us. I, I hope the students all recognize a liberal arts background and many of our recruiters that are joining us today. And I continue to value their support of our student body and um, the help towards the transferable skill set that's so apparent in the students of liberal arts. So I'm going to kick us off. Again, you're welcome to put um, you're welcome to put any questions in the Q and A, and we will get to them as we proceed. But I wanted to start with our panelists today and ask you. Where, where should students be looking for jobs and internships? What is your advice for how the best way is to find the jobs and internships they should be applying for? Anyone want to kick us off? I can. Thanks, Haley. 
Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining in. And thank you, Katie, for putting this all together. It's wonderful to see the panelists, which are some familiar faces as well. I think I've seen Megan and Liz before. Um, so hello again. Nice to see you. Um, but in terms of where you should be looking for your jobs, of course, you know, you could be looking on LinkedIn. Um, all of the platforms that we have, Handshake, LinkedIn, um, you name it, there are so many out there. You can even look at some Glassdoor reviews that way. But personally, I think the most effective way um, to really look for jobs is through events um, with liberal arts, with ever college that you're in, where you can really get some one-on-one -on -one time um, with the recruiter. Maybe it's not even one-on-one -on -one time, but you have that little personal connection there, um, which can really, really go a long way. So that would be my tip, but I'll popcorn it over to anyone else that would like to share. I just learned that term popcorn in the Zoom room. So there's always- We always stuff. have to use the Liz, popcorn to make things go. <laughs> That's right. Liz, did you have something to add? No, I would echo what Haley mentions. I think we're all very familiar with kind of the, the traditional ways of going about a career search, especially virtually or online. But um, I would say the more you can engage with business professionals, um, a lot of times it's about building the connection with the person before the company necessarily. Um, so I think attending even things like this, asking questions, being engaged when there's an employer in a classroom or at a, an optional networking event, really great opportunity to start those conversations and really form that relationship. Thank you. Anyone else? I'm gonna get a little bit more specific then and, and try not to make this negative aspect to this question, but what are common mistakes you're seeing students make when they're trying to build those networks with recruiters or trying to connect maybe through LinkedIn, through these information sessions or career fairs? How would you like them to be approaching you? I will, I'll jump in on that. So the first thing I would do is, you know, when we, we post our positions, I know all of us probably post a position. And then the other thing is we post the positions and then we tell you we're coming to the job fair. So it's an open book test. And so students really need to really, I, when I tell them, I do a presentation called Impressing the Recruiter and it covers, you know, uh, different things. And one of the things I tell you is you have, you have homework. So you have to go at night and look at who's coming and that tells you the job. And then that tells you the job description. And does that job description match what you have the talents for? And so that's what I would tell you. That's the, the one thing I would say. I love that, Greg. I definitely agree there. Um, and to go off of that as well, I think one huge common mistake that students make when they are thinking about approaching recruiters via LinkedIn or emailing them is that they're a little bit afraid. Um, they don't wanna be a bother. This is our jobs, you guys. You know, We are here to be a resource for you, not only just to come let you know about our company and hopefully get you to come work for us, um, but I truly think you know, just really going off of what Greg said there, that's kind of the best way is to not be afraid. Put yourself out there. What do you have to lose? Um, if the recruiter doesn't answer you, it's a big chance that they're just busy, um, but continue to follow up or even reach out to maybe another avenue throughout the company. Your eagerness will stand out to us. Um, I love an eager beaver. Um, so that's definitely going in my notes when someone follows up or reaches out to me directly. Yep, yep, totally agree. Greg, you specifically talked about specializing their documents and making it relevant, their resumes, um, to the skill set that you're looking for in your job description. Can you anyone speak more to how important this is in our office in the Career Enrichment Network? That's constantly what we're telling our students. Yes, you can get down all your experiences on your resume, but what does your reader want to know? What does Megan from Geico need to see yep. on this, this, this resume? And as you said, Greg, it's an open book text test it's yeah. all there for you so can you guys speak to that a little bit more yeah it is an open book test so every job that every one of us post it tells you what we're looking for and so basically if you want to tailor your resume to each if you're going to send it to us then tailor it for me you know the thing that jumps out should be leadership should be communication and teamwork so those are the things i see so when i see a resume and and you know for target i will tell you 
And in the New England area, and I, I don't know about Philadelphia, but I would bet you 40% of our store directors do not have business degrees. They have, they have communication, psychology. We don't care. At Target, we're not looking for a particular major. We're looking for leaders. And so liberal arts students, general you know, study students all have those leadership. So match, look at the job description, read it. Like I said, do the homework and match. Look at the skills that we're looking for. Like I'm looking for leadership. The other ones might be looking for different things, but have that. Because one of the things I will tell you um, that I, I love as a recruiter, because I will tell you it, it helps me screen out candidates very quickly. If they send me a resume looking for an executive team leader, which is that assistant manager position, but on your objective, you're putting looking for a marketing position. Guess what? That's going in the no pile because I know that's your goal and that's fine. If that's what your goal is, I would be make it really direct. And if you're trying to get my attention, looking for a leadership position. So, or don't even put the objective because if you're going to send it out to a few companies, I would take it off because for all of us, I think that's an easy way to screen out candidates. If you're telling me you're looking for something, but you're applying to something that has nothing to do with that, I, I'm going to pass you off. Um, I can second that 110%, Greg. I don't think I could have put it better myself. Um, it's one of actually one of my biggest pet peeves as a recruiter when I open a resume or a cover letter and it's like, I'm interested in applying for your accounting internship. I'm like, great. Well, you applied for our business leadership summer internship. So that's completely different. And it means that you didn't know exactly what you were applying for. And then it leads, it leads into that first question that most interviewers ask, tell me why you're interested in this position. And if you're like, well, or what do you know about this position? Well, I just saw it online and I thought I applied. You didn't do the research like Greg was saying. You didn't do it. I know you're not interested in this position. You're just mass applying. So to me as a recruiter, I'm like, all right, well, you're checked out of this interview. So I'm going to keep going, but I know you're not going to go forward. And I can make that decision within the first 10, five to 10 minutes of an interview. So um, I second 110% what Greg is saying that you have to, have to, have to tailor your resume your resume, your cover letter, whatever it may be. I'm a firm believer, don't put an objective statement on your resume. It's the quickest way to get you caught up and get you in the no pile. If you remove your objective statement, yeah, your resume may look a little scarce, especially maybe your juniors or sophomores, and that's fine. But now you're applying and there's nothing stopping you. We, I can see your experience. I can see your leadership. Even if it's from high school, I can still see it but there's no objective statement saying, telling me what you're looking for. Unless you can generalize your objective statement, which again, is an objective statement, then do that. But I'm a firm believer when I do resume reviews, I tell students to get rid of it by, it's not necessary. Megan, I'm with you. I'm with you. Get, get rid of it. Cause it's, it makes it my life easier. Cause I screen kids out all the time. Like I'm going to go through it really quickly. So yeah. Correct. And yeah. I, as Geico, we ask for cover letters um, through the hiring process. And I do read them. Not, I mean, not everybody's going to read them, but if you make it all the way up to our, man our management team, they will read them. And I've had management come back to me with a highlighted cover letter that says, did you read this? And I was like, ooh, I did, but I didn't catch a few things, right? So I'm going to read it to make sure that I'm covering, but then I'm going to come back to you and say, you misspelled Geico. It needs to be in all caps. You need to talk about this. You need to talk about that. So again, that goes into doing the research. And if you write a cover letter, it's going to help you write your resume for that job position if you write a cover letter correctly. I have a follow-up question to the no objective statement. Do you differentiate no objective statement with if someone's applying directly to your career site over if, let's say, next week at fall career days, a history major is there and they're interested in your, your program, your leadership program, but you might not see that direct connection. Do you suggest it for those that are looking outside of a common industry to use an objective statement so you know they're interested or you're truly just looking at the skills-based relevant experience then? Yep. Okay. And just especially like, during the job fair, whether it's virtual or you know we're doing it in person, uh, it's all about that connection piece. For me, it's all about connection. So do you have great communication skills? Because that's what you have to have, whether you work at Target, whether you work at all these companies, I think you have to have great communication skills and that's what I'm looking for. That's gonna sell me more than, I'm not looking at your resume. I might look at it quickly, but it's really gonna be that one-on-one -on -one personal connection that I'm looking for. Do I see you fitting into my company? Same yeah. here, Greg. Same here. And I'm looking at your experience. Yeah, I may glance at your major and your GPA, but okay, okay great, you have a degree in history, but you have a ton of leadership experience and your passion is leading people. 
I'm going to be like, come, come apply to Geico right away. I, I, I mean, yeah. I've hired people with biology degrees and yep. biochemistry degrees and degrees that aren't even relevant to Geico or, or business in general, but they had amazing leadership and their passion was for leading others. That's exactly what I want. And if you can tell me that in the 10 to 15 minutes that we have at a career fair, I, I don't need that in an objective statement. And, and I would, the one thing, Katie, I would say is if you, for me, I, I don't know about anybody else, but to me, the biggest leadership, because I'm looking for leadership, it sounds like Megan is, is if you're an RA, if you're an RA, that's like, I'm like stopping the conversation. So lead with that. Like current RA, because that tells me the school already signed off on you that you're a leader and you're responsible. So to me, that's huge. If you're an RA or if you um, work with THON in any aspect, if you're a committee member on THON or you ran a committee on THON, I love seeing THON on resume because that means you actively participated in a large organization type event where planning, delegating, and organize, organize, organizing is involved. So I'm with Greg, RA, THON, I mean, any campus of community involvement, I mean, just lead with those big ones. I mean, definitely make sure you're highlighting those. I, I, I always find it interesting when people put like at the bottom of their resume, like additional activities and they just put resident assistant, but nothing else. And it's super small. And I'm like, oh my God. that should be a whole semester, <laughs> especially if you've been an RA for so, like a few semesters, oh that should be a whole section. Um, or, you know, I say like, Hey, tell me more about your leadership. I always like to have that conversation and then follow up and be like, wow, you really add that to your resume because that would help a lot. It's funny. I'll do, I'll do interviews and I'll tell me a little, you know, one of the questions, just tell me about your leadership skills and there will be a resident assistant and I'm having the, I'm reading their resume, but they won't mention it. I'm sitting there going, okay, you just told me about what you did, but you're a resident assistant. Can you talk about that? And like, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm a leader. So a resident assistant to me is just like the shining star. But that's you can't be, that doesn't mean if you're not a resident assistant, I won't look at you. I mean, if you're a leader, I don't care if you're a leader at Dunkin' Donuts, chef leader. That to me, that's a leader. Own it. Yeah, that's that's what I was just gonna kind of echo off of you guys is here at Aku, you know, we don't hire based on major, we hire based on character traits. So we're looking for outgoing, hardworking, competitive reward-driven individuals. And when I speak with some students, you know, sometimes they'll undermine their own experience. Um, if you've worked at a grocery store for four years throughout high school, I want to know about that. For me, that is more valuable experience than personally, maybe it's an internship that you really didn't get much value from. Um, but in your mind, you're thinking, okay, it's an internship and this overpowers maybe my experience working at a gas station um, or even being a waitress, a server. I come from being a server um, and I can tell you all that, you know, we definitely look for those qualities in candidates. Um, it teaches you a lot. So just make sure you're owning your experience um, and you, you have a confident way of explaining the skills and traits that you've learned from it. Great point, Haley. Nope. I was going to say that, Haley, too. You know, many times meeting with students, they come to us and say they have no experience. And after the conversation, we realize they do. Or um, as you're saying, a server, I come from a server background, too. And it's a, a extensive, the transferable skill sets. However, not all students are then putting that down on the paper as a supportive transferable skill set. Do you all have any suggestions for those um, those experiences they've had or volunteer, what words do you like to see them using when it comes to volunteer um, service roles or part-time jobs, those kind of babysitting is always a struggle. <laughs> um, what are common ways you're seeing that? And I do have a question, couple questions coming in too. Um, please keep them coming. We'll definitely get to those as well. I'll jump in here and start this one. I think um, for me specifically, it's each student kind of defining what that opportunity meant for them specifically. Haley, to your example, right? We all know what a server does, but what we don't know is made that experience unique to you, right? So it was, you did it for this number of years, or you served this many customers, or you participated in training this many new associates. So um, Katie, to, to kind of answer your question, I would say it's more about adding those couple bullet points about what made that experience something that was valuable for them to participate in, um, regardless of where it fits in their resume, um, but really finding a way to find some of those quantitative pieces that um, each student can point to and you all can point to about what really made that um, something that helped you grow. I love that, Liz. And I think, again, 
I hate to say the ownership piece of it, but when I'm looking at bullet points, I want to see ownership increased, engaged, trained, led. Um, another little point on the bullets too, if you have a number, any type of number, whether it be a serving job um, or anything, try to work that in there. Um, I think having a numeric value surrounding something really, really adds values for recruiters and catches our eyes. That's, Haley, that's a really good point. That's what I tell students. If you can quantify your goals or what you did into a metric or a number and put it on paper, I think all companies, and I think we're all saying that's true. We love to see that you took something and you made it better, whether that be, oh, I led a team of four and three people got promoted, or I was, you know, top at upselling beverages when I was a server or something of that nature. If you can quantify it, that helps us in that process of interviewing, because now we kind of know where to guide our questions. And it also helps answer some of our questions that we may not necessarily need to ask in the interview process. So quantifying is huge. And I would say, don't spell out the number, just put the number on your resume, increase by 25%. Don't yes. spell 25 and, and percent, put tw- like, I want numbers because as an, as a recruiter, we're looking at your resume super fast, especially in the virtual setting. We're looking at it really quick. So generally I look at degree, GPA, grad date, and then I go to leadership. And then I look for anything that's going to jump out like numbers, quantifying projects, things like that. So really, if you can quantify it, that's the biggest thing to do. Even with like, maybe you're not a server, maybe you did research experience. I know as a psychology student, I feel a lot of research experience. So quantifying your research experience, what, what were those outcomes? What were those projects? Because that's hard work that you've done. And so you, you worked really hard at it. You probably worked in a group of people. You had to do a lot of research. You spent a lot of time. So put that on there, but quantify it. It's a lot of great information. Yes, and I'm glad a lot of this we tell our students. So we're on the right page for sure. Katie, Katie can I just add one thing? Ask, Katie, can I just can I add one thing? So mm-hmm. one, you asked the question like, what's the thing that trips up students? Um, and, and one of the things that's really it irks me all the time is if I don't meet you at a job fair or I don't meet you at an event, um, and you send me your resume and it does not have a graduation date, it puts you know, two, you know, uh, started 219 dash. I don't want to be a math major. Tell me when you're graduating, because that tells me whether you're an intern or an ETL or you're a sophomore or a freshman. And then I can send you an email like, hey, you don't qualify. But please put your graduation date. Please, please, please put the month and the date. Please. That's a, I don't know how many kids don't. It's like ooh, frustrating. All right. Sorry to interrupt. No, I'm sure the other people on the call have frustrating moments on resumes. So anyone else want to share something? (laughs) For me, specific to us, the College of the Liberal Arts. So there's a the there. The Pennsylvania State University. We like those, these, those. Um, And I would also say the graduation date is very common. But Penn State is located in University Park, Pennsylvania, not State College. So just... I'll kick off. Brenda, do you have any common errors you've seen on resumes? <laughs> I would say I've seen similar to you. I mean, really just missing those little details. Misspellings for me drive me crazy on a resume. If you can't proofread your resume or have someone else proofread your resume, um, then it, it does. It's just going to go right to the bin. It's just very frustrating. You know, at a college level, we should be able to spell things correctly, you know, know what town your university is in. Um, just those little details for me. Don't have your mom review your resume. Right. <laughs> please take it, please take it to career services or yes. Take I it know one of our, one of the many employers that the College of Liberal Arts deals with does resume reviews. Take it to us. I, hey, I'm a nerd when it comes to resume reviews. I love reviewing resumes. Even if it's perfect, I will find something to give you feedback on. But your mom, I don't feel, you know, I think she, she might be great. Awesome. Cool. Not going to give you the feedback you need to get you to that next step. So please make sure you have somebody else besides a family member review your resume. That's my biggest thing. It's like, well, my mom looked at it. Great. Did she tell you it was awesome? Because I'm going to tell you it might be a little different. 
So um, that's my piece of advice. Take it to the professionals. I always like to share that a lot of times when you upload a resume with your application, we actually can see the file name of your resume. So be mindful of what the file name is, because I've definitely seen some interesting ones that make me question whether or not I should open them. So be mindful. First and last name with the word resume is great. Anything above and beyond that, I would just double check that the file name is something you're comfortable or recruiter you're seeing too. I'd love to hear that story Thank another time. Re- I've got a couple yeah, good ones. <laughs> I keep reviewing the same resume from a student and its file name is a different student's name. So I, I don't know. So it's, it's a good thing to do. I'm going to do a little bit of housekeeping here. Um, somebody had asked where they can a- access the list of businesses and companies that are attending next week's fall career days. I did put the link in the chat. It's careerfairs.psu.edu. Just going to have to bury down into fall career days, pick the days you're looking for. Reminder that Tuesday the 21st is the full-time in-person day at the BJC from 11 to 4. Um, and will anyone be there? Raise hand in person. There on the no, no. Nope. Um, well, good news. The twenty second is we'll the be internship there. <laughs> and full time virtual day. There you go. As is the twenty third virtual, but that is an internship focus. So you will have to register for the twenty second and twenty third, and you can find all that information there. Um, we suggest that you get an appointment with a career coach before then, if you'd like for us to review your documents. The other question that came through is, can we add leadership experience from high school? Um, And someone else asked a similar question. I had a professor once say to leave the additional activities and such that are from high school off of our resume now that we are in college. Would you agree or is this putting things like being captain of a sports team or service leadership awards from activities like Girl Scouts okay to put on? Well, my, my personal, I, I'll go by, I don't think high school should be on there unless you're like a valedictorian, then I want to know that. That's pretty cool. But I, I don't really know, care if you're the football captain or the baseball captain or the cheerleading captain. That's, unless you're a freshman or sophomore. You're a freshman or sophomore and you send me a resume, that's fine. You don't have a lot. Exactly. But yeah. once you're a junior, I think now we're. I, Kick I, the high school. Off. Yeah. I would say. We do look at if you are in Boy Scouts. I know Eagle Scout is very oh, okay. hard to deter- okay. to achieve. So if you've achieved yes. Eagle Scout level in Boy Scouts, I would definitely say put that on your resume. I know it's something that we look for at Geico. Yeah. Great leadership experience yeah. with Eagle Scout. So I know that's something we look for. I know there might be something equivalent to Girl Scouts. I didn't make it all the way through Girl Scouts. <laughs> about Megan, great point. Yeah, I, 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 I do look at that because I've. it's just been a history since I've been doing Thing. the kids that are uh, Eagle Scouts are pretty impressive. So yeah. make it a point that if you're an Eagle Scout, I would, I would kind of like that. Yep. I think in terms of job experience, personally, um, as a freshman, especially if you necessarily don't have a lot of experience to put on there, that's college relevant. I, as a recruiter for a company like Alku, where we hire people for sales, we love students that work in high school. If you start working before college, um, that's huge for us because it really shows that you're eager and you want to get out there. Um, and I think, you know, even myself having jobs in high school, I learned so much. So um, I like to see it. But again, what Greg said, you know, end of sophomore year, junior year, you guys should be more active, engaged on campus and have more opportunities to put on that resume. I think there becomes an absence when it ended at your senior year and it didn't continue until you're applying for an internship for sure. But yeah, so, freshman, sophomore. And we, we were just updated for everyone. Um, a Girl Scout award is a gold award. So yes, that's, that's awesome. I, I was not aware of that. So that's awesome. Thank but you. Sophie. Good to know. I made it to my senior year, but we like sleep outs and selling cookies and that was it, no badges. <laughs> so any other, these are great questions for the students on the line. Thank you so much. I do have many more, but I would love to hear from you guys. Um, we did just get a question. What do you all think about seeing Honor Society? Um, President, or this is more from high school. Um, does this look like a good continuation if honors levels are continued in college? I would also say to segue into more of a current question, 
do you look for dean's list or scholarships um honors those type of things as well on resumes so high school honors current honors definitely look for current honors um i mean it's not something i'm specifically looking at on the resume but it's nice to have right it shows that you are truly caring about your work um but yeah, it's, it's not something that's at the top of my priority list in terms of resume. Sometimes when I have a student who has like a 3.7, 3.8, 3.94, and they're trying to get in their Dean's List and, and multiple awards that we're not always quite sure of the reason they've received them. I, I There's all so many more leadership opportunities they could have on that one page than maybe some of those things would you guide them to focus more on those experiences at that point and that GPA really speaks for their academic excellence or it's still a piece of the puzzle? I, if you have a 3.7 GPA, I'm automatically going to assume you're on the Dean's list, whether that, and I don't think you should put, you know, you know, 2012 or, or 2020, 2021, 2022. Like, I don't need to know how many semesters you were on the Dean's List. I just assume if you have a 3.7, at some point in time, you've been on the Dean's List. Awesome, cool beans. I want you to spend that time and that space on your resume talking about your leadership and other experiences that you've had. Um, another great question when it comes to the resume. Um, and then we'll hit some other pieces of the application process. Do you like to see relevant coursework section on a resume? Um, sometimes I work with students that don't always have the practical experience per se, so their foundation is truly academic. So do you like to see relevant courses or do you like to see an academic project section to subsidize for maybe a lack of part-time work? I guess, what would catch your eye if we're trying to help a student with their resume um, who may not have as much leadership or experience as others? I'm going to be honest with you. Coursework doesn't do it for me. I don't, I don't look at it. It's kind of like it's a filler. And if that's what you need to do because you don't have, then I'm okay. But it doesn't, I don't, I like kind of like Haley says, I don't focus on it. I don't go, oh, I got to do, what courses did they take? I really, because again, I don't really, I'm looking for, not a particular course that they took so uh, that's for me I think too just relating off of Greg like Katie said putting a project in replacement of that um, I am I'm guilty of having relevant coursework on my resume when I was in college um, but that was before I had internships um, and I was really really on my job hunt so I do understand, and I'm not shooting you guys down for having that, um, because of course, you know, if you're applying for a specific Pacific role and you have a class experience maybe that ties into that, I think adding the project piece is more valuable than just putting, I took this class. To know, thank you. I. There's another question about coursework, but this is segueing into the elevator pitch. So let's um, talk a little bit more about maybe fall career days or career days in general, um, both virtual and in person. The question is surrounded around the elevator pitch. What does the elevator pitch, uh, uh, does it exist anymore? Um, and how do you want to be approached both in the virtual and in person setting? Um, and this particular student's asking about coursework, if that's something to be included. Not to keep going, but I would say that some of our students within the liberal arts may have a major like a language and doing a business option that you may not be aware that they also have these business courses or psychology has the business courses. Um, so at what point does that make sense to include both there in, um, in the, in the um, elevator pitch? I like the elevator pitch, or at least that opening conversation. Tell me a little bit about yourself, but here's the one word of advice I would give. Can you please smile? Because if you're not smiling, none of us. Energy is everything. Person, yeah, not, I mean, that's the opening thing that's going to impress me if you're smiling, because that tells me you're a pretty friendly person, because I don't think any of us go to campus and go, let's go hire some miserable people. I don't think any of us do that. So 
smiles more important than anything. And then, you know, have a conversation. I, I don't want it like you're just repeating it like wrote, but have that like, hey, this is me. This is what I've done. This is what I'm, and I read about your company and I like this position. Can you tell me a little bit, a bit more? It's going to be that conversation, but please smile because um, if you don't smile, then it's, it's going to be a big turnoff for me because that's who you're going to deal with at Target. You're going to deal with the public. And if you're not smiling, uh, I'm not sure I want to bring you on board right away. I like to kind of coach an elevator pitch almost, but a shortened version of it for business professional events, right? When I was in school, elevator pitches were like four minutes long. Like four minutes is a lot of time to fill. So I actually like to coach what, what I call a personal commercial and it includes four things and it's like 15 seconds. I want to know your name, your major, when you're graduating and what you want to do when you graduate. And I always say, you can spin that in a lot of ways, right? You can know, I absolutely, yes, want to be an accountant, or I'm not quite sure what I want to do, but this is my degree. And I really like working with peace people. And I always tell students, the beautiful thing about that is you can talk to any of these recruiters or any employer with that exact same kind of starter conversation. And then every person at a career fair or networking event will kind of take ownership in that conversation with you. And so you all as students are then off the hook, right? So I always say that's one really easy way to start a conversation because it's four things you already know about yourself, um, but it gives each of us just enough information about you to really start to lead that conversation with you in a direction that makes the most sense. I love that, Liz. I think the four things are so important, even if it's not a pitch, um, but just an introduction, giving that you know, giving a confident introduction is huge too. You know, not I'm Haley, yeah, yeah. Just really own it. Um, but also as a sales company, I love an elevator pitch. If you can sell yourself to me, 100% we're in. But I want to hear, you know, what sets you apart from candidates in your pitch. I want to hear what you bring to the table that is going to make you such a valuable asset at Alku. Um, and I think a tailored elevator pitch, for example, if someone says to me, you know, I think I'd be great for Alku because I'm super hardworking because of blah, blah, blah experience in their life. For me, that's amazing. Um, so I do love an elevator pitch and I do agree with Liz to making sure you have those four things and you're confident with saying it. So practice that, you know, walk around your room. My name is Haley Centrella. I graduated from college in 2018, um, but practice that, have that ready to go because you're gonna be using that a lot, especially as we begin shifting back into these in-person events where you're introducing yourself and really putting yourself out there. How is the elevator pitch different in a, let me ask you this first, because in for the students on the board, please keep asking your questions. If it makes sense to put it in the question and answer box, that's a little bit more helpful because sometimes they get lost in the chat um, as everybody, you know, scrolls up. So this is just a side question. Do you prefer a Word doc or a PDF format for a resume when they're applying for everybody's systems a little different? It's to me. It doesn't matter. I think it's all. Yeah. And I think it more matters the template you use. Um, if you're going to use a template, just when you up, when it uploads, make no sure template. that no yeah, template. don't use any templates. <laughs> I know. If you are going to use a template, make sure when you do upload your resume, the information that it's transferring over transfers over correctly. Cause a lot of times it doesn't. And then we as a recruiter have to call you and say, Hey, we need to verify like all of this information. Um, and please don't put your photo on your resume. Good question. They're good, good thing. Please no. do not. I know no it's, I'll look at your LinkedIn, maybe we'll look there, but please do not put your photo. No, I mean, colors, graphics, just plain and simple. Is anyone on the call so part of the reason not to use a template at least coming from our office is we're learning more and more about application tracking systems number one and they are not they are not template friendly more than likely so and that's even more important to be using those keywords greg talked about earlier to be in your resume so that they're they're making it through the system and in getting caught um so that's one of the reasons not to use templates they also um can really um, drive you crazy and end up being two pages and, and just be distracting oh. and you know, you're cramming more things onto one. So 
a good te- there are some good ones out there but we more than likely are, are pushing pushing away from those but everyone's a little bit a little bit different i can't believe we only have 15 minutes left um so any tips for the virtual career fairs um and how does this differ for you for the in-person fairs Absolutely. I'll start off quick. Um, I know we only have 15 minutes, so I'll make it fast, but virtual presence is everything. Think about if you are going to the virtual fair, think about everything, your background, what you're wearing, um, how you're presenting yourself. Are you sitting this close to the camera? Are you back here rocking around like you don't care? Um, Have good posture, show that you're engaged, bring the energy. There is nothing worse than when I get on a one-on-one career fair. you know, there's something that they're, hey, how are you? I don't want to see that. I want to see excitement, you know, be prepared, be ready to go. We do understand that these are long days for you, um, but they're long days for recruiters as well, too. So keep that energy. It's going to bounce back to you. Um, and that would be my tip there. I'll pass it on. I, I agree with everything Haley said. I, I can't say it better. The only thing I do, and I, I make a joke of it, when we do, we do a, a interview prep session the night before we do interviews to try to help the kids. I always say, take a Red Bull before you walk into a target interview. You, you better have some energy or this is not the right job for you. But Even I, with interview I, notes, I'll read an interview note and it's, you know, the most common thing didn't bring enough energy. Um, it wasn't there. So I know someone mentioned that earlier, but it, it really is huge. Even in a virtual aspect, it's going to make you stand out. I agree with Haley and Greg, um, especially your background. Please, if you're in your dorm room, please make sure like your bed is made. It's tight, like it's tidy. No like, liquor guys, bottles. Yeah, I've seen please, empty bottles. I've, please, yeah. if you've got like something on the wall, please make sure it's like, if you were at work, is that something that you would want your boss to see hanging on your wall? And if not, and the recruiter's like, hey, do you want to video chat? It's completely fine to say, actually, unfortunately, I'm not able to video chat right now. Completely fine. There's no judgment there as well. Um, because I understand that you may have three other roommates and they're all doing, everyone's off the career fair at the same time. We understand that. Um, one of my biggest pieces of advice is please do your research. Please research before the career fair. I think the biggest thing, and I think I say this, and Katie can probably back me up on this. I say this every time. My biggest pet peeve is when somebody comes to my booth at Geico and says, what positions are you hiring for? I work at a company where we hire for over hundreds of thousands of jobs all the time. So I hire for a lot of different positions. So, and to me, that means you're like, oh, I just saw Geico's booth. I'm going to stop by and see what's going on. So that means now I have to take more time to figure out what you're looking for and ask you more questions versus taking that 10 minutes that Brazen gives us to really talk about the position. So please do your research, especially um, international students. I would definitely make sure that you double check to see if the company can hire international students before stopping in at that booth. Um, I think that's super important, but please, please, please do your research before coming in. Even if it's just like, hey, I just had a quick chance to glance, but can you tell me more about your summer internship? Oh, Megan, yes. That's perfect. Yeah. I don't need you to read the whole job description and bring questions. I'm just needing you to say, hey, I had a quick chance to look. I haven't really like dug too deep into it, but I looked at it. Can you tell me more about it? And I'd be like, oh yeah, sure. Great. Because I don't want to go through my spiel of the position if you've already done all of that. So I want you to kind of tell me what you're looking for. Mm-hmm. Megan brought up a good point that there is 10 minutes when it comes to the Brazen platform. Um, When you are speaking to a recruiter, it can be extended certain points, but sometimes the lines can also get very long, so it might not have the opportunity to do that. Um, So for everyone on the call who's thinking about fall career days, when you do get to that website, there's tutorials available to understand the Brazen platform. I would really suggest doing that. I think they're about 30 minutes um, doing those beforehand so that you know that you can stand in more than one line. You can send messages to the recruiter if you're not able to meet with them that day and have to go to class. So I think it'll not only help you to feel more prepared, but also allow you to be a little bit more efficient in in how you navigate the Brazen platform. Um, Are there, when it comes to LinkedIn, are you all using it? And do, is there something you're looking for in a LinkedIn profile, especially in the application process? Activity. I love when I look at someone's LinkedIn profile 
and they're supporting their friends, they're engaging on LinkedIn. Um, but my biggest tip is your activity is public. So be aware of what you're engaging with on LinkedIn. Stay away from controversial topics um, and things of that nature because it, it can pop up on our feed. I have two on LinkedIn. Um, my first, when you send a connection request and a message with it, we all meet a lot of people, right? Remind me where we met. That's great. We get a lot of connection requests even from people I don't know who they are. So I'm more apt to accept it if I know where we met, right? Or, hey, I saw you in class, something like that. So send a note. Um, and then my second one would be modify your headline, which is that little thing that lives under your photo um, to something other than what it defaults to, which is your current position at your current company, because most people don't change that thing. And so you will stand out from the crowd if you modify that. And you can include skills, you can include career goals, you can include, um, you know, what you're studying, you can really do a lot with that headline, there's a lot of really great articles out there that you can utilize to change that, but that will definitely make somebody stand out on LinkedIn, because not many people take advantage of that. Hey, Katie, uh, the only thing I'll say, uh, I'll just put a plug in, Target does a national presentation on LinkedIn, we're doing it next Tuesday, I think it's, uh, I think I sent that to you, it's a great event, my my peer in California does it and she's really good with it. And it's great for someone to get some pointers on. So I know we're all throwing some, but uh, it's it's next um, next Tuesday at night. So just I, I just added that to an A-line career. So everyone should be able to go into information sessions and see for Target next on um, the 21st at six o'clock. It's a Lincoln. But it's not a, it's, it's actually not a recruiting tool. It's really just a branding thing that we, sure. we because not everybody wants to work for Target. I get it. But it's, it's a great tool just if you want to get some information on LinkedIn and how to build your profile better. So just uh, highly recommend it. Because when I went on it the first time, I was like, wow, I didn't know that. I think too is not holding yourself back from adding connections if you don't feel like your profile is completely complete. Your resume, your LinkedIn, it's a constant work. It's going to constantly be evolving. Um, so don't hold back from making a connection with one of us today, maybe because you're afraid that your profile isn't up to date. I know that you're constantly working on it. I don't expect you to have a profile of someone who's been out of college for two years, um, but don't miss the opportunity to make those networking connections because you're afraid of, you know, them looking at your profile. Uh, someone had asked it 10 minutes per person, both in person and virtual for fall career days. Uh, no. So it's just the time, there's a timer on for the, the virtual event um, that counts down. There's no timer for the in-person, um, which can be good and bad. At the same time, um, that'll just be a very organic conversation and probably have an organic end to it. Someone also asked for, um, do you need Twitter and Facebook info for resume? I would say no, that's more of a social social media as opposed to LinkedIn. I, your faces speak uh, for everything. Um, so I would focus more on your LinkedIn and having a URL, um, a short URL or um, QR code even, it can be helpful for your resume. Uh, the last question that I have just to do some housekeeping and then I would love for each of you to send some parting words um, for the application process or networking or even um, career fairs and such um, before we can go. So um, the last one was, is it useful to know a second language? This person mentioned Spanish. Yeah. Specifically, but are you looking for any language skills and or global experience? Language skills are huge. So if anybody speaks another language, make sure that's on your resume. Make sure you bring that up during a conversation because that is huge for all of us because we deal with the public and the public has multi-language. So yes, that's huge. If you have two languages, three languages, it's amazing. Yeah, yep. awesome. I think also too, you can put the level of the language that you you're comfortable with. Um, I myself speak Italian. I don't think I'm 100% fluent, but I can have a conversation and understand. Um, so, you know, on my resume, it actually says elementary Italian, proficient in conversation um, when I was graduating college because I was looking at jobs out there. But yeah, be comfortable with the level too. I think that's huge because if you're able to have some conversing in Spanish and things like that, that's huge. That's a, that's a big value add. Great. Um, I wanted to put a couple of plugs in. Um, we have um, many of these faces you'll see again. We have a lot of students on the call today from LA 103, our professional development course. And I know we have interest from our recruiters to participate in mock interviews coming up. So if you 
choose the virtual op option in Keith's class, they will, you might see them again. Um, we also um, have Target again has a virtual office hours tomorrow. They are still open if you're interested in, in grabbing one. There are three, three, three people coming our way um, from Target to do those. Um, Haley and Megan both have events at the end of the month. So we will be doing a virtual interviewing workshop with Haley um, and Megan will also have virtual office hours um, after fall career days, the week of the 27th. So, um, and I'm sure Liz and I'll be planning something and, and as well as uh, Tori with polls. So um, make sure you're keeping an eye on inf uh, information sessions in Nittany Lion Careers as well as Liberal Arts Newswire where everything appears. So any parting words from anyone in, in common mistakes, what you're really looking for, confidence builders and getting ready um, to really apply and look for internships and jobs. I will pop in quick because I do have to hop out of here, but I think my biggest tip, um, not, only, not only for you know appealing to employers, but find what is important to you in a company um, and really run with it and ask the questions that align with those values. Because at the end of the day, guys, if you have to change who you are for a position, it might not be, or it isn't the position um, for you. So be yourself, identify yourself, you know, what you want in a position um, and really run with that. Confidence is key. Energy is huge. Always smile. Take advantage of the Career Enrichment Network um, and, you know, come to our info sessions. But good luck with the rest of the semester. You know, I know that it's different being back fully in person, um, but put yourselves out there. Get involved. There's so much on this campus. I am blown away already. I wish I had come here myself, um, but take advantage of it while you're here. Thank you all so much for having me. Thank you, Haley. I'll see you tomorrow. Anyone else? Brenda, it's pretty good what Haley said. Like so I'll just, I'll, I, I, I don't know Thanks, if we can Greg. talk that. I, I yeah, now I have some new recruiter friends. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was really good. So that's what I, was, I will point out that they do make friends, right? So you all mm -hmm. make friends, right? Recruiter friends. So if you, we might be competing for you, back but on a job. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> But it's if you true. go back on a job offer, they talk. So don't make yep. those bad choices. <laughs> Anyone else want to share any last minute advice or another I, I, I think, from students? Yeah, I think both. I think we all kind of said it, but I know Megan stressed it and I know I stressed it. Please do your research. It's an open book test. Go find out the company, read about the company, read about the job, see if it matches what you could do. And uh, that's, the, I would say, the key thing before, the, especially to before the job fairs. Find out which ones, you know, pick four or five companies that these are the companies that they have great culture from what I'm reading, the job fits, I could do that. And, and then go talk to those uh, recruiters. And then the other thing I would tell you is kind of flip the switch. When you go to a job fair, and, and I can tell from all of us, but if you go to a job fair and you're talking to a campus recruiter, and then not friendly, boy, that's a big red flag. Like, wow, what, what company would send a person who's miserable to a job fair? All of us are pretty friendly, as you can see. So that might give you an indication of what's the culture like in the company. That's what I would tell you. That's my one words of wisdom, because I've seen it. I, I've looked it over, seen other recruiters, and they're like miserable. Like, they don't want to be there. And I'm like, okay, well, that's the culture. I don't know if I want to join that company. That's my word. So that is Greg. That is a hundred percent. So true. Um, just a little story is we were actually at a career fair, me and one of my coworkers in person before COVID and her and I were just talking. We had some downtime. We were laughing and a student comes up to us and says, are you guys like, do you guys, are you guys like friends? Like, do you guys like, like each other? And I was like, yeah, she's like one of my really good friends. We work together. We met through Geico, you know, I know her family. And she's like, I was just watching you guys from far and you guys look like you have the most fun working together. And I was like, yeah, everybody's like this at Geico. And they're like, that's really awesome. And like, I, and then, so she just wanted to talk to us about our career opportunities because she was like, you two just look like you have so much fun. And I was like, yeah, that's completely right. And it didn't really dawn on me until it happened. And now that Greg's saying it, it resonates even more, but it's a hundred percent true. If, especially in the virtual world, if the recruiter's like, yeah, we can video chat. And they're like, hey, we're not talking about. Oh yeah, we've got this. Yeah, here's the link. Have a good day. That is that somebody that you really is that a company that you really want to work for? Yes, we're recruiters. Our job is to sell you to come work for us. But 
not everybody's as good as their job as we may be, um, or have as much fun at their job as we might. So that I think Greg has a huge point is that even if you look to see the company culture and there may be a few things that you're not really sure about, go to that booth because if 50% or 70% of that position you are interested in, you're not just sure and you're unsure about the other 30%, go to the booth, ask that 30% about those questions to help determine that because not everything's going to be given to you in the job description or on the company page. There may be more questions you have. So go talk to the recruiter. They're there to answer those questions and help you get a better picture of what the company is like and what the position's like. So don't just read the job description and be like, meh, I'm not really sure. I'm just going to say no. Be like, well, this actually sounds interesting. I have more questions. Go ask those questions. And I just wanted to say a big thank you to you, Katie, for setting this all up, all the other employers. It's been fun. Um, the biggest thing I always emphasize is it's never too early to start. Um, you know, I was that student that probably waited a little bit too long to start to engage when I was on campus and talk to employers. And, you know, if it feels a little bit early, it's probably the right time to start. So take advantage of all the resources that are available to you because there will never be another time in your life where you'll have these many resources all dedicated to helping you find the right job um, and the right career. So start now, stay engaged, continue to have conversations, and it will definitely pay off in the long run. Sounds good. Well, thank you all for being here. I, I hope that the students that are still on the call that you see how friendly the recruiters are and that most all of us are people, people. So that's why we do what we do and that you feel comfortable going to them at any of the of these events. So just a reminder, again, Career Enrichment Network is here for the College of the Liberal Arts. Um, you can schedule an appointment for Nittany Lion Careers. Um, just select a coach with liberal arts after their name um, and you'll find uh, our availability and you know pick what works best for you. If you have any questions about this event, feel free to email me directly. It's kmw30 at psu.edu. I'll put it in the chat. Um, but if not, then we will sign off for the night. I know recruiting season is super busy and I'm sure you guys have lots to do. So thank you all for joining us um, and I appreciate your time. Awesome. Take care. Thanks, Katie. Bye, guys. Thanks, Thanks Katie. Thanks. Bye.